Pack. And we are here with two amazing men, Mr. Jonathan Maimon, Head of Product Marketing at Elementor, and Munib Minhajuddin, VP of Product Marketing at VMware. Welcome. We're so proud to have you here. Thank you, Lillian. Really, really happy to be here. So Thank in you, this Lillian. Excited. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Thank you. So in this fireside chat by PLG Disrupt, Jonathan Maimon, Head of Product Marketing at Elementor, sits down with Munib Minhazuddin, VP of Product Marketing at VMware, to discuss the challenges the SaaS industry has been going through due to COVID, along with how the role of product marketers changed when PLG is at play. So the session's key takeaways are agile marketing in a time of crisis, empathizing with your customers in their time of need, the balance in the tone and approach, rallying your ecosystem to join your efforts, and of course, the evolving role of the product marketing in the product-led era. So I'm leaving you two to play the game and have a fruitful discussion, and I'll be back when you finish, okay? Thanks, Lillian. Okay, Thank have you. a nice time. Bye. You will. Ciao. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, hi, Munib. Hey, Jonathan. How are you doing? I'm quite well. Uh, yeah, a little, little bit of a, of a time difference uh, going on here. I'm in Tel Aviv, where the time is 10 minutes to midnight. Uh, and I'm in Palo Alto. Well, it's just 10 minutes to 2 p.m. here, so... Uh, yeah, so different different energies, uh, but uh, you know, but also um, I think they will uh, uh, they'll c contribute uh, the discussion. Um, so I think you know the sort of COVID is always prefacing a lot of uh, a lot of conversations that everyone is having uh, in the tech scene. I think a lot of uh, a lot of areas within. Uh, you know, within the industry, uh, are being affected and are being influenced and being uh, slightly changed around. And I think product marketing, as we'll probably go uh, slightly further uh, deeper into, um, I kind of dubbed it. You know, when I sort of posted uh, this event on LinkedIn today, uh, called it uh, the first responders of. Uh, uh, of the of the of the organization, they are together with uh, customer support and uh, and and success. Uh, the first line of defense um, when communicating with uh, with with customers and with users, and we know that this time uh, ushers in a lot of challenges when it comes to just even maintaining relationships with uh, with clients, clients who were used to seeing you on a day-to-day -day who are used to uh, being handled a, a specific way, not to mention the financial ramifications of uh, everything that we're dealing with. Uh, so tell me how this thing looks, how this, um, uh, this sort of uh, change in atmosphere uh, plays out uh, at VMware, which is, you know, a, a global, um, you know, global organization with, Tens of yeah. thousands of clients in all walks of life. No, no, it's a great point, Jonathan. I think uh, you know, in hindsight, how we reacted. You know, first, mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, like most organizations had to react to, right? Um, when there was a shutdown notice, uh, VMware with thirty-three thousand employees in you know a lot of locations worldwide. You know, effectively in twelve hours, we had to shut down offices and all come home and work from home. Right, so there was the first in instant uh, piece was uh, make sure your employees are all productive, safe, working remote VR. You know, so this the first few weeks of everybody trying to make sure that you know you as an organization are able to still operate mm -hmm. in, at all the different levels, different levels of just employees being productive. Second, as a larger organization, we also also have to support our you know, 500 to half a million enterprise customers B2B, right? So, and they scale from, you know, 100% of Fortune 1000, you know, global 5000, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, how do you remotely support them? How do you remotely, you know, uh, make sure their systems are all live and if something goes down? So it's not only, you know, our customer success teams have to be online. They all have to do this remotely. Yeah. Um, that was the kind of the first reaction. The second piece was, well, get our employees in good shape, but then get our customers always, you know, is how do we help our customers? And I, um, what we try to do was basically 
ensuring that our customers can also operate all their employees remotely, right? So we had, you know, lucky enough to have offers in place, which, you know, like digital workspace, which, you know, VDI, mobile, doesn't matter what type of device, bring your own, doesn't have to be corporate. We can push out these work um, spaces to anybody through just fast. So we mm -hmm. literally saw, you know, I had maybe um, 72 hours max to activate offers from VMware to the marketplace. Within 72 hours, we packaged and you know uh, an offer to, and you know there was different aspects of it. First, message and position. Second, uh, come up with promotional offer. Third, then you know get enablement to our 9,000 sales uh, organization. Uh, arm them with you know email that they could send on Monday morning. This happened Thursday night, so Monday morning, you know. 500,000 customers are getting email from our reps uh, and, and basically, you know, message, scale, have, you know, offers in place. And very importantly, while doing all of this is one of the elements is at what tone, what is the message, the tone you're going to say? Are you going to sound like what I would call ambulance chasers who are trying to, uh, you know, you know, sound like, you know, how many emails did you get from people saying, hey, COVID, I'll help you with something and sell you something. So it's, it was very important to you know lot, not look at our entire portfolio, only focus on the portfolio that's going to help our customers be that first responders. Mm -hmm. In that process, we ended up you know supporting hospitals like all the you know the first responders, uh, enabling our technology you know pretty fast. So we had you know well established uh, hospitals stood up, you know a lot of you know facilities stood up because you know people were creating hospital beds out of parking lots and mm -hmm. they needed connectivity. They needed electronic medical records. They need to access everything from the cloud. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how do you rapidly set up? So we were shipping kits um, to insurance, to, you know, medical hospitals and facilities and, you know, medical, electronic medical records. We partner with, you know, Epic, which is a you know electron, popular electronic medical record system. And, you know, they were invited in the White House to report on 90,000 hospitals in the United States. How are you going to scale the medical records and they kind of brought us in to present how we're going to support the cloud infrastructure in the back end so within 72 hours scaling the message but the the voice the empathy was super important the tone was important because you know we messaged to say again the letter from that i crafted for our 9000 reps was basically to say to send an email to the customer and say are you guys doing okay is everything okay? Is you know, is your business, you know, our employees all remotely fine? They're fine. You know, we're not here to make any, you know, um, offer or sell anything. It's basically checking it to say, and you know, we want to assure you that we've kind of within twelve hours shifted to a remote working, and we will continue to support your five nines reliability, no downtime. You know, so we will assure you you got business continuity with our products and support and systems. Second, do you need similar help? Do you need help in just continuing, you know, the same amount of business continuity that you need for your customers? Then we're happy to help, right? So that was kind of the, the first response. And the promotional offers we put out was basically to say that if you are any one of these 500,000 existing VMware customers, you have for the next 90 days unlimited bursting capacity, right? You know, so sure, you did not buy everything from us, you know, but we understand you're in a sticky situation. So burst as much capacity as you need for the next 90 days. We won't charge anything, right? Uh, and then, you know, after 90 days, let's, you know, true up, let's find out how we mm -hmm. can help you. And if you're not a VMware customer, here's some free offers for you to, at a capped capacity for you to try things because, you know, you have a need for these workspaces you have. So that was kind of the offer. Uh, we launched it Monday morning. Within a week, we had thousands of customers uh, reaching out for help and we were kind of the the first response like the first response was basically get everybody working safely at home productive <coughs> and you know i think that was the, the you know it was kind of amazingly done but let me tell you this though um like to your point mm -hmm. product marketing led the way because you know because suddenly you are like yes i need customer success but you could do customer success bespoke one by one customer Needed product marketing to jump in, develop that message, develop those offers, broadcast it, keep the consistency of the mm -hmm. message, keep the empathy of that message so that, you know, because it's a fine line. You could be say, hey, buy all of this. I got a free promotion. Or 
are you doing okay? I'm here to help you. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a very fine tone in how you position that, right? Yeah. So, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm hearing, uh, you know, three, three essentials, uh, really, when it comes to a, you know, to, to first just respond and then to mitigate and then to navigate. So, you know, A, it is to, first of all, make sure that everything's working to, to so first and foremost, to ensure uh, customers that everything's okay and that everything's online and the SLA is and will forever remain what it, uh, what, you know, what it is that they sign up for. Uh, this, the second one, as you said, is, is, is empathy and empathy is, and will forever be sort of my North star, uh, with everything product marketing. And I, I genuinely, uh, I believe that this is the core, uh, characteristic of a product marketer. So, uh, really to kind of, uh, be attuned to, uh, to very, very specific and unpredictable needs that arise and not to just go cookie cutter and, uh, and put some like faux empathy uh, spread on everything as, yeah, you know, in these strange and difficult times, because everyone says that, and that doesn't really touch anyone. Um, and, and also, I think that's kind of where, where, it hits, uh, where it hits me. I think product marketers, if we're talking agility, uh, you know, in, in a company that has built uh, its product marketing team well, um, we usually own uh, the channels that are uh, always readily available that require very little setup time and also very little dependencies from other teams, dev, data, uh, whatever. Uh, so we can, even if it's just communication and communication means a lot uh, when we're talking about a crisis of this magnitude, just to broadcast something, like you said, uh, the fact that we own these uh, broadcasting channels and we okay. own the message that is being broadcasted through them uh, is, I think, what makes uh, an effective product marketing team, you know, really the the, the first line of defense and, and buys a lot of time for, uh, you know, for product and dev teams and sales teams to kind of really shift themselves and reorganize and regroup around these circumstances that have befallen us. I agree, Jonathan. I think it's also, again, given the, the size of our kind of business as well, uh, one of the things we have to deal with is, you know, again, 33,000 employees, 500,000 customers, 80,000 partner ecosystem, the consistency of that message, because uh, communication is good. But if everybody is consistently going with this empathy, with this approach, and, you know, that consistency scales because, you yep. um, uh, you know, I can't, you know, say with, you know, 9,000 sellers, 80,000 resellers, uh, you know, uh, executives top down, everybody's saying the same thing within mm -hmm. 72 hours and in a consistent way that goes a long way in the growth of the, you know, um, mm -hmm. the perception of the market. And, and, and product marketing is, you know, is the kind of the, the bedrock where, where that consistency is being kind of, you know, is being propagated and spread across everything. It is, right? And I think, you know, that was a, like a 72-hour effort that produced mm -hmm. enough revenue for our VMware that, you know, what was was kind of in the first quarter where most organizations had a dip, we were able to actually do better than what the street expected or even me expected because yeah. even though all the offers were, hey, yes, but everybody was like, I need help and I'm happy to pay for that. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just need productivity. And what quickly happened from the first instance of customers going, I need everybody to work efficiently, remotely, you know, mm -hmm. the second phase that hit within a, within a few weeks was of COVID was, huh, a lot of the, our customers were like, I've got some serious cash flow issues, <laughs> right? Um, everybody is like, well, it's starting to hit the downturn because I got my employees all working. I did what I have to do to get my business going. Mm -hmm. However, if they had not consciously build a, a digital supply chain for their product mm -hmm. and services to be delivered completely online, they started seeing cash flow drop, right? Definitely. So, you know, the, the second phase of our, like we call this as a future ready organization was about to say, okay, now that you get your employees, right? How are you gonna, you know, ensure that there is continuum in your business? Uh, because what was being questioned was, uh, and these are across all segments, right? It was mm -hmm. you know, certain segments are he heavily impacted, like, you know, entertainment, transportation, they're all heavily impacted. 
Um, but even you know across the segments, they were like, only I wish I had a digital supply chain. Like this scales at all levels. It's like the Connor restaurant. If they didn't have uh, Uber Eats or you know your local online system, they yeah. were not selling. They were not selling, or their their business was down because they were all shut down. Yeah. And to a larger scale of like the WalMarts or the retail stores, like everybody was suddenly wondering, how do I do digital trans? Like everybody's been talking about digital transformation for years. Yeah, but the, the created the urgency to kind of say, you know, when digital transformation was. Um, you know, was an experiment. You know, I've got my business. I got my business critical applications. I got my cash flow. Um, I want to try. If you're if you're not a startup who's trying to break in with a, a full digital existing large corporations, I'm gonna go try this as a test dev. I'm gonna do experiment with this. I'm gonna go after new demographics. I'm gonna try messaging around this, and you know, sign up and do product marketing in a digital SaaS fashion and enroll. But I'm not gonna touch my you know, cash cow traditional business. Yep. That whole perception flipped mm-hmm. overnight with COVID, where they said, "Well, my traditional business cash flow is tanking. I got to go and digitally transform my existing business critical applications so that I can last. My the financial viability of my business is being questioned right now yeah. because of my lack of digital way of accessing my customers. So that became urgently the second phase. That's still happening today is Mm -hmm. a lot of large corporations realizing that they have to become a lot more proactive. And this is where I call, you know, phases like product marketing, product management, where historically non-SaaS, you know, traditional way you build product and then you should message and you inform people. Now what's happening more in the SaaS world is, you know, you are kind of, selling in app right you're like Pretty use much. this you need this i need you to do more so you're you're very agile in how you message to kind of say oh you need a business you're stuck here with a business let's go do a business financial risk analysis let's do this and you know let's build in capability where you consume this and you consume a little bit more so um the whole kind of agility has shifted because mm-hmm. of the urgency it's created and the urgency is really the economy hitting every business of all sizes equally on their cash flow and their financial viability, right? It's just an interesting times to be in, right? Uh, absolutely. It's a very, very uh, fascinating, uh, humbling time, I think, to be, uh, to be involved in, uh, uh, in technology that enables um, you know, people to, uh, to transform themselves uh, online. Uh, I, can, you know, I, can, I can speak for my own... Um, Sort of their narrow slice of the of the world, and I think we're kind of you know two uh, two sides of the same uh, of the same coin. Where uh, Elementor is uh, is is really kind of a, a mid market, um, almost DIY uh, self serve uh, website builder for uh, um, for WordPress. It's a, a market leader in that category, uh, and. Anywhere you go, um, you know, you, you talked about the restaurants, uh, you know, who are now in need of what you called, and I, I absolutely love this term, and I'm going to just completely absorb it, uh, uh, digital supply chain, uh, which is it, it really kind of, a, it's, it's a very accurate uh, description of exactly that, of, of you know, businesses and, and establishments who have, barely you know even began to resign themselves to the fact that they need some sort of online presence you know talking a website a social media presence whatever you know the very very rudimentary stuff that a business needs in 2020 now all of a sudden 90 percent of their entire uh, revenue stream has to come from online sources um how do, you know how do you do that how do you facilitate that and specifically how do you do that for uh, for a segment that is traditionally sh- sh- shies away from uh, from 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 tech and from yeah. uh, from SaaS solutions, uh, or do so, you know, almost at gunpoint, and if they absolutely have to, so now they 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 kind of do, and uh, these self serve solutions um, really do uh, really do flourish, which uh, I think. Um, can, is a is a really really good segue, I think, to uh, to our next. And I'm looking at the time, and it might be our uh, our, our final topic of conversation. 
which is the transformation of the role itself. Um, I personally have uh, have seen and and you know as many of you know, Tel Aviv is a very lively uh, uh, tech scene uh, that was uh, uh, we remain relatively unscathed uh, so far. Uh, and I can't remember a time where there were uh, more product marketing positions being opened uh, at all levels of seniority and across all industries. Um, and it certainly feels like it's a little bit more than novelty. It is definitely something that companies feel that it is a discipline they need to, uh, to endorse earlier rather than later. Um, what, what's, what's, uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, look, I think the more and more, the, the, the interesting thing about the product market fit is mm -hmm. where, you know, tech companies, <laughs> as I said, like, you know, historical evolution of, you know, I, I call it three different models of how you would build in the history is you built a perpetual model where you build one time and you sell and it's, it's like selling your house or buying a house process mm -hmm. or buying a car. Um, second model is about leasing your car. You see, commit for three, three, four years. That's kind of your subscription term-based kind of license model. And then now then you get the Uber model or the, you know, the Lyft model where you just consume what you want to consume. And um, the, the value and the importance of product marketing evolves in all three, you know, more and more significantly where, you know, when you are building these big, you know, building a car and you're gonna market it, you have plenty of time on reference designs, architecture. So you can you can take your time oiling the market, you know, you know, getting them ready and messaging. You're dependent on what feature functionality capabilities are coming because it's very, let's say, tech heavy or product heavy. Um, and then you're conveying that message in a more easier way to consume. When it becomes more term-based, you know, that that speed of acceleration goes a little bit faster because it's not, you know, the risk of buying a car to kind of leasing is now up to the, the message that you give to the customers that, hey, because in the first instance, the customer's taking the risk when they're spending all that money to buy a big commitment for a house or a car. Second, in the leasing, they're making some commitment, but you've got to keep them, you know, to get renew the lease and, you know, after. So you got to be still relevant. And then at that time, the product marketing aspect is to say, hey, at the time of the upgrade of the renewals and stuff, make sure they've got the right roadmap, right functionality. So it's like, you know, not a one-time touch up front. It's mm -hmm. a regular touch. But then when you come to the SaaS world, you got to be, you know, talking to them every month. You got to yep. be messaging and communicating your value and your differentiation because, you know, your churn could be month by month. So yep. uh, what you're seeing with the uplift of product marketing roles is because like this, you know, this notion of in-app selling and this notion of messaging constantly and keeping your products and functionalities mm -hmm. and solutions relevant regularly mm -hmm. and messaging the cap capabilities all the time because now is when as more and more solutions become more SaaS oriented. There's more and more need for product marketing folks who can drive that consistent monthly cadence of message and relevance with the customer community, which used to be like a one-time thing in large companies were doing you know, huge waterfall, big launches. I'll do a big launch event, tell analysts, everybody one time do a press event, I'm done. It's not anymore. You got to be relevant every yeah. day, every hour, every month, right? So, um, and that requires a fair amount of you know product marketing expertise and muscle to mm -hmm. be able to keep cutting through the noise. Yeah. And you're seeing this kind of bump up happen more and more mm -hmm. now because it's it, it's it's really what you can cut through and get across in your message is why your customers are going to buy because there's so much choice today. Mm -hmm. I, th I think also what at least what what I'm what I'm experiencing from uh, uh, from from my end is that um, you have as I said you have more segments coming in to use SaaS products that would have otherwise found alternatives or uh, wouldn't you know I, I'm I'm just like I'm I'm trying to think how many uh, you know how many people have built. A website or a drop shipping or a last mile uh you know, use the last mile uh, service um you know all of these things that when you had a store when you had a shop on the high street that was your you know so yeah maybe you had an extension online maybe you had a brand maybe you 
you know, you've, you've worked around that, but now that you are completely dependent uh, on a product that wasn't, you know, that wasn't necessarily built for you in mind, you know, I don't, uh, you know, I don't think necessarily a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, large e-commerce platforms were built with a high store, with a high street uh, shop in mind um, and their capabilities. So I think a lot of uh, what, you know, what now falls under, uh, under product marketing is to be sort of be the welcoming committee for all of these new segments and to enable products that were not necessarily tailored to the size and the needs and the, the, the very, you know, nuanced uh, use uh, of all of these, you know, segments who are now banging on the door and like, let us in, let us in. We need to sell, we need to have our business still viable online. Yeah. And, you know, I think the key of the art of the product marketing is how do you get that <clears throat> message to cut through among mm -hmm. everybody else who's trying to say the same thing is, you know, how do you differentiate yourself? What's your yeah. USP and why would anybody, you know, talk to you? And I think that's, uh, you know, competingly, um, you know, that's that's competition. That's healthy. And it's, you know, it's, uh, but, you know, that digital channel now has become the, the primary channel. And, um, you know, how do you all communicate and get that across? So, and, you know, I, this again, you know, some leaders end up because I would say where product marketing again was kind of messaging things out. You have now the opportunity to actually drive uh, positive revenue growth and business growth for your organization. Because if you are not able to create a differentiating message and not get through this crowded front door, <laughs> then you have direct revenue business you know impact yep. uh, right so i think that's that's a power position to be in and you know and to be responsible for that yep i couldn't agree more um i think one last thing because i think we still have a little bit of time left um one thing and and you know that is just generally something that i uh uh, that I've been sort of uh, ruminating a lot around. Uh, product marketing, by nature, is a is a cross organization position. It's a position that may report to a specific area of a specific uh, uh, you know um, branch of the organization. Sometimes it can be to marketing, to product, to a product marketing department if we're lucky enough. Uh, but more often than not, most interfaces product marketing would have is just across the organization from, uh, you know, from, from customer support on one side through sales, product, dev, UX, marketing, content, um, and, you know, PR, all of those, uh, and all those things that will, that need to facilitate, uh, messaging. Uh, the right kind uh, and to deliver uh, the value proposition of the product in a way that makes sense to the user. Uh, I personally have, you know, the, 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 the job that I, uh, that I hold now, I started it during COVID. So essentially I'm now four and a half months in uh, to, to, to the job and I haven't yet met, I think 90% of my colleagues face to face, uh, you know, people come to the office sometimes, sometimes they don't. Um, I'm I'm just curious, and you know, obviously, you have to deal with a lot, with a, you know, much larger, more complex uh, organization. Um, how does that translate uh, to to remote working? You know, how does this cross functionality matrix management, um, you know, yeah. how, how do you maintain that, you know, that edge? A lot of meetings, a lot of Zoom, Zoom meetings and online meetings. But you know, I've had the justify. Benefit of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, I've had the benefit of being at VMware for eight years, and you know, um, known a lot of people in person. So, mm -hmm. um, but also having grown the organization, I hold the you know product marketing responsibility across the board. There's a large team, right? you know, almost um, 240 uh, product marketeers across the company, and you know. And I annually run a product marketing summit and I had mm -hmm. to do it all virtually and I did it for two days and it was fun um, where we all share what we're doing, what's the best thing, you know, I kind of hosted and run it for all our product marketeers in the company. Um, but you're absolutely right. I have to be in dealing with scale, like you said, right? I have to deal with um, three geo leadership. You know, there is a thousands of marketing organization. Uh, 
tens of thousands of sellers, if I take direct and partner resellers and um, customer success team, which are a few thousand, 4,000 for customer success and support teams uh, and ARPR, we just pulled off our VM world two, day, two weeks ago. And the first kind of virtual time we did it. And usually we would do a US and a Barcelona and then take it in the APJ. This time we did 48 hours all online, 24 by seven. Um, you know, we're close to about, you know, we had 150,000 registrations and uh, more than 50% showed up. We're still collecting because it's still on demand. That scale with, you know, about, you know, a few hundred analysts, IR, PR, AR, um, it's pretty hard. <laughs> you know, like Tell you said, like product marketing is from, from the, you know, the inception of product, product management, development, UX, going to launch with PR, AR, enablement of sales teams and partner ecosystems, establishing partnerships. We have the biggest partnerships with AWS, Google, Microsoft, everybody, to yep. then launching it at an event. And then it's in resp responsible for customer success. It's rolling out and the customers have mm -hmm. questions. Um, we, you know, you have a unique line of sight through the entire life cycle of from the inception to the deployment of the product consumption and then the enhancement of the capability. So um, it is quite hard. It is quite kind of um, matrixed and, uh, you know, you constantly have to stay in touch. COVID's probably the one thing I missed, though, right, because I'm in the headquarters here. There are about, you know, 7,000 odd people in the headquarters. Um, there's a lot of the times when you are going to the cafeteria or walking. The you know the water cooler chats or the you know the, the you queued up to collect your salad for lunch or whatever right so yeah. when you run into people that's not happening but every, mm -hmm. everything is a concerted effort to join a lot of meetings but you know mm -hmm. yesterday was probably the first time our you know head of procurement called on me and he was like well you know I used to run into you he was his office was not far from me right but you know mm -hmm. we never had a formal meeting. But, you know, obviously everything my organization buys and stuff goes through him. And anytime we have any concerns, we'd be run into each other while buying. It's like, hey, what about this issue? So we just never had a 30 minute meeting. We'll always solve it while on the way to the cafeteria. He and I met for the first time after eight months. He's just like, dude, we haven't spoken. And I have all these things that we used to resolve in like a two minute walk yeah. uh, to the cafeteria. Like we have to make a concerted 30 minute effort now. In the eight years, I never had to do it. But now you have to consciously you know everybody like this is procurement mm -hmm. right? <laughs> they all also depend on us because like how we have taken our message to market has changed because we would procure event services we've booked for vm world moscone in san francisco a huge building have hundreds of agencies who will put up the show floor blah 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 now it's all digital right the whole procurement aspect has changed but you know i'm the biggest spender he has when that <laughs> happens I'm not spending that anymore. He's like, what's going on? So, you know, everybody like friend, then legal is an issue, you know, revenue is an issue, right? Legal is like, well, you make big, cl big claims at VMware. Like, you know, you said you've got, you know, 80 million workloads that are running on VMware, you know, 15, 000, 15 million of them on the cloud, blah, blah, blah. So every claim you make in this big event, then I have to go through legal revenue. So, you know, there's not a function that is in the company you don't touch. Yep. And every time you touch them is, you know, you are empowered and you are conveying to them, you know, what it means for them to also, they were kind of looking at you because, um, you know, it's just actually quite surprising is they look at you to sometimes they'll have the, oh, let's transact business. But second, there's like, can you just give me an idea of where our company's going in this environment? Because <laughs> they know that you are in a very good position because you can connect the dots to say, Hey, is this company, and I've had this multiple times in the last six to eight months, when they're not directly involved with sales or bookings or stuff, you know, their concerns is like, hey, how's the company doing? Are we you know, helping customers? Are revenues okay? Mm -hmm. So you get these questions, which you're not accountable for, but you, they know that you know. Right? Exactly. Uh, uh, which is very powerful. Yeah, I think it, it, it harkens something I've read, and I think it's one of the better books I've read. Uh, I've, I've read my life about the the, the workplace um, sort of the, you know the workplace culture or the workplace ethos. Uh, it was written by a guy called Scott Birkin. Uh, he was uh, an executive at Microsoft for many years, and then he left after a decade at Microsoft, and he joined WordPress. And that was around 2011, I think. And WordPress obviously is a remote company; so they don't have a headquarters. Their entire uh, operation runs remotely. 
and uh, again, that's almost 10 years ago. And he talks about you know the trials and tribulations of remote working. And one of the things that he mentioned there, uh, you know, alongside many many benefits of remote working, which there are. Uh, first of all, the book is called The Year Without Pants, which is one of the most brilliant uh, n book names I've uh, I've come across. Uh, he he mentioned something about uh, the fact that. When you're in an office environment, I think you know, you've mentioned the dynamics, the sort of the the on your way to the you know to to the to the uh, dining room and on your way to the cafeteria exactly, uh, and that's where most of the work actually happens. And and not only that, but you measure your place in the hierarchy in your organization according to how many meetings you're being pulled into that you weren't initially called upon for you. It's like, hey, let's get this guy here. I think he has, you know, and this is how you kind of measure where you uh, where you are and where you really are in the food chain. And that is something that is almost impossible to achieve uh, online. Still, it does happen, you know, someone slacks you, like, yeah, we were having a meeting about something. I was like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever, I'll come. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, but I see Lillian here, so that means we're- uh, We're almost out of time. It was almost out of time. The police is here, the police is yeah. here, you know? <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> where, Lillian, where, you leave, where? <laughs> if you leave me and Jonathan, we can keep chatting for hours. So. Yeah, exactly. I, know, I think there's, there's, I, I there needs to be just a live stream of the two of us just talking. Yeah. The we don't step, need an audience. The <laughs> next step is to bring you something to drink, you know, and then you're ready to stay here for another three hours. I don't know. Oh, this, this was just on water. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, stay hydrated. No, I'm not, I, exactly. I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to promise anything once the, once the call is over. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. I have to thank you for this amazing fireside chat. It was insanely good thank and you. insightful. Uh, we don't have time for questions, but I think you were so thorough and detailed. So I think you covered everything. I mean, at least in my eyes, you covered everything. So thank you so much for being here. And uh, we really wish you all the best. And we hope that we see you in the future in yes, our please. future events. Okay. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you Bye -bye. so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay, so stay with us. Uh, in just a few minutes, we are starting uh, the next fireside chat uh, with uh, Amitai God and Saint Korea. Uh, so stay for just two, three minutes, and then maybe more. Yeah, six minutes. And then we start. Okay? Bye-bye.